guys, it is time for another current rotation update. I currently have over 200 pairs of sneakers, but today I'm gonna show you guys the pairs that I actually wear. And we'll go through some of the ones that I have stopped wearing. All right, let's kick this one off with uh, an absolute haymaker. Now look, don't judge me until you've actually tried these things. I've been rocking the Yeezy Pods. So as you guys know, I made a review on these things and I was 100% convinced that I was basically gonna make that review and never wear them again. Turns out these Yeezy pods are really, really good for specific purposes. So I haven't been wearing them out and about like normal shoes or anything like that, but I do kind of wear these things like every single day. So when I'm working, editing videos and stuff like that, I usually walk on a treadmill at my desk. And ever since I got these, I've started wearing them. And I've also been wearing these things to the gym as leg day shoes. Because these are basically barefoot shoes, like I explained in my video, they're great for your feet. So walking in them every day, squatting, deadlifting, these things have been really, really solid. The only issue I have is I got a size two, which is just a little bit too big for me. There's like a little bit of a gap at the top, which, you know, on normal sneakers wouldn't be that big of an issue, but on these, you can really see it. I have ordered a size one to see if they fit any better, but uh, you know, God knows when I'm gonna get that. Now they do look uh, a little bit crazy, especially at first. Like it takes a little bit of getting used to rocking these things, but trust me, if you've ordered a pair or if you're interested in these $20 Yeezy pods, I would definitely recommend giving them a try if you fall into the category of would you actually find a use case for them. And I mean, for 20 bucks, you, you really can't lose. Aside from the Yeezy pods, shoes that I wear to the gym is really quite a mixed bag. Most of the time it ends up being some kind of running shoes like Ultra Boost or Nikes, or it'll just be this pair of 350s, which is looking pretty beat, but they kind of act like a pair of running shoes, super comfortable and a great gym shoe. Sometimes it'll even be a pair of Jordans if, uh, you know, the crease police don't come after me. Nothing massively has changed with my gym rotation, so if you've seen some of the other videos that I've made, then you kind of get the gist. Now I mentioned Jordan, so let's kick off my main current rotation with uh, this pair of Jordan 1s. This is the Washed Blacks. Man, these have been a solid pair in my rotation for quite a while now, and I'm still rocking with them. I absolutely love this pair of shoes. The creasing is uh, not the best in these. It's uh, very visible, especially with this leather, but I mean, hey, if you're buying a pair of Jordan 1s, you kind of know what you signed up for. I even took them on vacation with me to Mexico this month, so I think these are going to be a staple in my summer wardrobe for this year as well. Now, while we're talking about staples, I have to talk about Yeezy Foam Runners because I'm three years into wearing this pair, and they're still an integral part of my rotation. I also thought it'd be cool to show you guys what a three-year-old pair of Foam Runners that are heavily worn kind of looks like and what you can expect if you ever did buy a pair of these. When I say heavily worn, I mean heavily worn, like I don't think there's a single week that goes past without me throwing these things on, even if it's just running errands. They've come with me on every single vacation since I got them, and they're still in one piece. Now, right now, they do look pretty damn worn. You can see there's a, a lot of marks on them, but the thing is, these things clean up really, really well, and super easily also. Like, I even made a post on IG on, like, how easy these things are to clean up. You literally just chuck them in a sink, get some detergent, a scrubbing brush, and just, you know, go to town. Give them a little once-over, and they're practically brand new. The thing is with easy foam runners is like the longer you wear them the more comfortable they get so like even though I own a couple other pairs of easy foam runners every time I put those ones on that are relatively brand new I'm like damn these things feel like bricks compared to my heavily worn in soft and comfortable OG pair another pretty wild thing is when you actually put them side by side like this is my worn pair and this is a brand new DS pair when you put them side by side you can see how much they've actually been worn in like how stretched this ankle area area is compared to a brand new one. And they're even like a tiny bit wider because I've just, you know, stretched them out over time. The only potential issue with foam runners is that because the outsole doesn't have any rubber traction or anything like that, it is just foam. It wears down very, very quickly. So you can see on my pair compared to a brand new one, that tread is definitely pretty smooth. And I can only imagine these will only last me a little bit longer. I maybe got like one, two more summers in these before they go completely flat on the bottom 
them and become like super slippy. Besides foam runners, my other super comfy options are of course Yeezy slides. This is the latest addition, the bone colorway. As you guys know, my original pair, this is the uh, the Ochres. I've been wearing these for a very long time. I think it's been like three years. And I've recently retired them. I just kind of got tired of the brown color, wanted something new. These are my new everyday. It's just, you know, super simple colorway, goes with everything. They're insanely comfortable. I don't need to go over this again. And then the only other pair that's heavily in my rotation is this Azure or the blue colorway. And they're just a little bit less wearable, so I don't wear them as often as this bone pair. But, you know, having a nice little set of them definitely gives me options. Other slip-ons or mules that I have are these two right over here. I also wear them quite a lot. Although I actually stopped wearing my represent mules because they kind of just got burnt out really quickly. Like if you take a look at them, they just look like they've got these permanent creases in there and even the like midsole or outsole area has started cracking on the inside. It's a bit of a shame because I did like these things a lot. They are pretty damn comfortable, but they're just so expensive. I didn't expect them to be burnt out this quickly. And it's not like they're unwearable or they have broken or something. It's just that they look really old and tatty. So the use case would mainly just be walking around inside the house. But thankfully I've got another pair, which is really, really cool actually. This is from a brand called Atrion. They mainly do 3D printed shoes. However, they created a mule that I'm a huge fan of. So they have quite a unique design and shape. This is almost like corduroy material mixed with suede around the toe box. But one thing that's really cool is that they have a little strap on the back. So they kind of operate like Crocs. You know, if you need to put these things in sport mode, you can, or you can just, you know, unbutton this completely and then you've got a regular mule. Now we are just coming out of winter. You know, it's still definitely boot weather and I've got a good amount of boots in my rotation. However, I do just want to highlight two pairs. First one is these Echo shoes, which I guess are kind of like a bit of a hybrid between a boot and just a regular pair of shoes, which is I think the main reason why I love these things so much. So they basically have like all of the comfort of a pair of sneakers. So this midsole is super soft and squishy. The upper is insanely soft and squishy. It's got like padded suede with soft leathers all over it. But because they're so big and chunky, they do give you that look that you would want from a pair of boots. So this is something that I've kind of been able to dress up a lot more and I've been super happy with that because normally if I'm dressing up and I want a pair of boots, a lot of them are not that comfortable. So this is definitely a go-to option for me. I've spoke about these multiple times. I really, really like them. Another pair of boots which I've been wearing a lot recently is this pair right over here. It's from a brand called Racer Worldwide. And first of all, they're just insanely unique. Like, look at these things. That is like crazy. All of these suede things are actually like literal bandage looking things. So it gives a mummy look to them. But if you pull all of this off, what you get underneath is kind of like a military style boot. It's got a very rugged Vibram outsole, which gives it a lot of durability, but also is pretty comfortable. It performs just like a pair of boots. It's a solid pair. I think it just gives a really unique look on foot. I've been loving them. I think these things go hard. Hopping into my main rotation, my dailies. Crazily enough, these are still in my rotation. Like I feel like ever since I got these things like two or three years ago now, I've just always been prone to wearing them. Again, a pair of shoes that I think has been part of most of my other episodes. It's incredibly comfortable, but I, I just honestly think this is one of my favorite shoes of all time. There's something about it. Again, a very unique kind of, you know, you gotta really like this design to rock these things. I love them. They're one of the most comfortable, like super hyped up sneakers that you could possibly get. It's a very, very nice pair of shoes that I honestly wish I had more colorways of, but looking at the prices of those other colorways, I just don't think I'll ever be able to buy them. Similar note, these have been part of the rotation ever since I got them. Yeezy 700 V2 Creams. An incredible daily sneaker. Like I wear these things all the time. I just leave them downstairs ready right by the door. So whenever I'm hopping out, I can choose these. Insanely comfortable, really nice pair of shoes. I wear them to the gym sometimes. I mean, you guys know if you've watched any of my other ones, these are definitely one of my favorites. Some of the newer additions though, starts with the New Balance Warped Runner in this sale colorway. I'm a huge fan of these. It's another really solid daily sneaker. It's a very minimal design. And in the right colorway, they go with a lot of different outfits. They also look great in shorts. So it's a pair that I think I'm gonna wear a lot during this summertime as well. Yeah, love these things. Of course, insanely comfortable and very well made because it's New Balance. Also been wearing these J Balvin 3s. Well, I mean, not that much because they're relatively new, but I actually took these things on vacation this month to Mexico with me and I was rocking them and I was like, damn, these things are just so good looking. I wore them a ton 
ton out there and I think these are going to become a staple in my rotation during the summertime. Right now it's a little bit risky outside. I'm probably going to wait till we have some consistent sunny weather here to rock these things but a great summer pair of shoes. These and the Croft 3s are going to be my go-to this year. Last one before we get into the shoes that I have issues with. Flowers for Society. So I have the Radical Low pair and I've been wearing that for a while. Absolutely love those things but this is the latest edition. This is the Seed 1 model and uh, I've only just got them so I've only worn them for like a week. They're definitely going to be in my rotation permanently now. In fact I've already left them downstairs as my like daily run around shoe. Uh, I've worn them to the gym. They are really really cool looking. Again something a little bit unique. One of my favorite underrated features about this thing is the split tongue which is something you don't find on too many shoes but it just makes it super comfortable like it doesn't rub up against your ankles like some other shoes and because there's padding on this tongue it kind of wraps around your ankle and acts like a little extra layer. All right some sneakers that I've got rid of or just have issues with. But let's start with a pair that I got rid of but you know kind of didn't want to. It's not because of anything bad so let's kick it off light. The Yeezy 700 V2 Vantas. I know. I, I, I know. It breaks my heart that I got rid of them but I actually gave them to my brother for his birthday. He always said how much he loved those sneakers and I was like okay I'll get them for him for his birthday and as I went to go and buy a pair I saw the resale prices and I was like there's no way I'm paying that much. I'm just gonna give him my pair. So I did. He loves them. It's a happy ending but it's still something that I'm pretty sad about. Speaking of Yeezys we've got our first pair that I've got a big issue with. This is the Yeezy 700 MNVN laceless in the analog colorway and I don't know what the hell is wrong with these things but they look terrible after not that long of wearing them. I don't know how much you're going to be able to pick up on camera but this is supposed to be white just like this midsole but it's not. It is now a really weird discolored part and you've got like a ton of stains all over it in really specific places like around the 700 logo on the inside you've got two big stains over there so I washed them out and you know scrubbed them put them in the washing machine all of that and they're still there. These stains are not coming out of this material and it's to the point now where like they just look really really terrible terrible for how old they are. Like I haven't been wearing them that much. I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this same issue. I don't know whether I need to like throw them in bleach or maybe I just need to say F it and dye them a different color to hide the stains. Another pair of the mules, the represent ones, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we don't have to get into it. They just look really trashy now. So I don't really end up wearing these things anywhere out of the house. And then last one, another heartbreaker, the Nike SB Dunk Low San Francisco Huff collaboration. Probably one of my favorite SB Dunks for a very long time. I absolutely love those things except for the way that they make my feet feel. I had to get rid of them because I just couldn't bring myself to wear them. Every single time I put them on they would absolutely kill my feet. Specifically around the toe box. Something towards the last lace loop towards the toes was just so tight. I even unlaced them fully and they were still super tight and killing my feet. I don't have this issue with any other Dunk and for some reason this one is just so super tight. The nail in the coffin for these things was when I went to a sneaker event and I had to be on my feet all day and obviously I chose to wear this pair of shoes and I was miserable, getting increasingly miserable with every single step. So when I got home I was like these things are getting off my feet and I'm never putting them back on again. Sad times because I really do love those things. But that is my current rotation. Obviously there's some others that you know have either been part of my rotation, they come in and out or special occasions, but these are the sneakers that I'm mainly rocking with at the moment. Let me know down in the comment section what your current rotation looks like and click over there for the top 10 most comfortable sneakers.